Hey guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And I'm so excited about this episode because Dawn, aka The Minimal Mom, is back on with us. And if you know anything about her or follow her channel, she's an expert when it comes to minimal living, but yet her stuff is so, you it, it's realistic. And that's what I love about Dawn. So Dawn, thank you so much for coming back on. Thanks, Rachel. It's so fun to be here. I oh, know, yeah, it's so great. Okay, so we survived Christmas. You know, we Yay. made it through. And so now it's like, okay, we have Christmas gifts. And if you have little kids, they've gotten Christmas gifts, maybe from friends and family and Santa and like all that's there. Uh, your Christmas decor is probably still up, which I'm not mad at. I'm an after New Year's kind of person anyways. But man, it just feels like there's just stuff everywhere. So yeah. I want to know, when do you take down Christmas decorations? And how do you organize them, Dawn? Because... This is one thing I'm like, you can just like stuff it in a box, half open, half right, ripped right. in an attic, and you're like, I'll worry about it next year. <laughs> right. Uh, so we've already been taking it down. I'm a like couple days after Christmas. I'm kind of ready to get the house back to normal. I think because of all of the other stuff that's come in, I'm kind of like, what can I control? I can control decorations and Christmas wrap and boxes, Amazon boxes everywhere. So I take control over that. And then I usually give the kids kind of a week of toys and stuff everywhere before we kind of zero in on that too. Yes, that's so good. I know. Well, I just, probably like four weeks before Christmas, I went up to our playroom and I had a bag to give stuff away, a bag to throw stuff away, and even some stuff to put away because I know this sounds so like cheesy and sentimental, but my mom and my husband's mom kept bins of our of our toys when we were kids. Yeah. So when my kids go play at my parents' house, my mom like, oh, you know, she has a lot of our toys from childhood, which I think is sweet. So I, I am keeping yeah. one bin just to like pass on maybe one day. Yeah. Who knows if I'll end up with it. But even just clearing stuff out before the Christmas chaos helped me. But what would you say in people's playrooms, you know, specifically with kids. Yeah. Like, what are the best ways? What, are, what can we do now to like, like, I don't know, have a, have a, a deep breath because I just feel like yeah, there can right. just be crap everywhere. <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe how many moms before Christmas were already worried about the aftermath of Christmas, right? And so I think the most important thing we can do right now is to take a step back and remember that for our children, it is very important that we create an environment where they can play and play successfully. And so if you look at the research, play is such a huge part of our children's childhood because that is when the prefrontal cortex of their brain is developing. Mm. And so through play, they are learning problem-solving skills, social skills, all of these really important things. And it's not developed in the same way if they're watching TV or if they're playing a game on a device. It actually is through play, physical play with toys and with other kids. And so I do think it's important to step back and say, you know, like it feels a little overwhelming. I probably have at least one child who's really attached to everything, but it is really important that we set up an atmosphere and an environment in our home where they can succeed at this. And so I feel like having that perspective going in can help us to make some of these tough decisions. So once we kind of set our mindset and uh, we know what our goal is, we want to find toys that create this environment where kids can play. And what that means then is there's probably toys that they've outgrown. Um, there's probably toys that we thought they would really like, and it could have even been a Christmas gift this year, and they're <laughs> just not interested. They thought it was cool when they opened it up, and they have not gone back to it. And so we really have to like kind of use our dis detective skills as moms to say, okay, what things engage them? And what things don't. And it can be disheartening when it's the like expensive like Montessori toys or the, the educational toys that we thought was going to, that's what's going to develop their brain, right? When it's actually usually the more open-ended stuff like blocks, Duplos, Magnetiles, yes. a few like baby dolls and trucks and, and that kind of thing. Okay, that's so good because I think that does, sometimes for me, I can justify for whatever mm -hmm. reason, like keeping like this, well, maybe, and just having some like lanes for my mind to go down when I am sorting or figuring out, it's so helpful. So those guidelines, it's, it, it is, it's so, that's so, so helpful. And chances are, if they're not engaged with it now, 
Um, nothing's going to change in the future. Sometimes we think, oh, maybe when they're a little older or maybe on a snowy day or, or something else, if they're not playing with it now, there's a pretty good chance they're not going to. But I also loved what you said, Rachel, about having like one container of like, maybe like sentimental toys or the goal is to pass them on. I hear from so many moms that we're more attached to the toys than their kids are. And I've gone through that too. There's been toys I've got my kids. I'm like, I would have loved to have this when I was, you know, a child and I've got it and they, they couldn't care less. And so there are things um, that I might keep for myself, you know, in a memory bin or put in their memory bins because they really did love it when they were little, but now they've outgrown it. And so we can set a few things aside for that, but have a container, have a limit. That's the goal of that container. And then the rest, let's pass on to other people that can make use of it. Yes. Oh, I love that. I know. And what's funny about that kind of stuff, like toys, just like fashion, I'm like, it cycles back every like 30 years. Because my mom has a whole thing of Polly Pockets. Like she has this, like, this big, yes. from when I was a kid and my girls were like, yes. These are the coolest Polly Pockets because they have some, yeah, all of it. So it makes me laugh. And I'm like, man, who knows? Who knows what'll still come back? What will come back in style? Right. Right. I yep. love it. Okay, so that's kind of with kids, you know, gifts, playrooms, all of that. So in just in general, kids, you know, people have kids or not, what are things that you're looking around? Okay, for the new year, here's some areas of your life that you could organize and really help your life. Uh, our yes. Both of our friend, Dr. John Zaloni, I know you know him yes. as well. Uh, he had this whole thing about like the amount of anxiety can even equate to the amount of clutter that we have. Like, like get rid of stuff. If your house is a mess, it's going to cause you to feel messy. I don't know, it was a post and it was like, it was so well said. And I know we can all feel that. So heading yes. into the new year, people have resolutions. They want to start new habits. So being the expert that you are in this area, what are ways you're like, (laughs) yes, 2023, think about this and this when it comes to organizing? So I actually hate the word organize because I failed at it for so many years. And like, that's always our goal. I think as women in our house is we need to be organized, right? And I just sucked at it. Like I was not good at organization. I could put it in place, but it never stayed that way. Right. And so I was so hard on myself because I'm like, Dawn, get it together. You know, like what is wrong with you? And so what I've realized over the years is that every item in our home is inventory that we have to manage. We have to take care of it. We have to keep it dry, keep it from pests, keep it organized, not forget about it, use it before it expires. And so if you're looking at different areas of your house that you just can't keep organized, that just aren't working, it could be your front hall closet, it could be your kid's toy room, it could be your own clothes closet. Usually if we just can't get the organization to work, we're frustrated with ourselves, it's just because there's too much inventory in there. And this is good news because there's nothing wrong with you. You're not messy or unorganized or even lazy. I would tell myself that. I'm like, oh, Dawn, you're just so lazy. It's Saturday. Mm. You should be organizing, not avoiding it, right? You know, but I realized that we can all manage different amounts of inventory and it usually changes depending on the season that we're in. And so I thought when we had really little kids, I was like, oh, I can only manage a low amount of inventory because it just requires so much like hands-on work raising kids, right? Yeah. And now our kids are getting older and they're like eight through 13. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I can manage even less now <laughs> than I did when they were younger because we are running and we're this and they want to talk about like really important things, you know, and I'm, and I'm having to like learn new parenting skills. And I'm like, I, the amount of inventory I can manage in my home and keep it organized and keep it picked up and, and just generally feel like a good mom is so low. So Mm. I want to encourage you again, we're looking at mindset shifts that we're making this year. There's nothing wrong with you. If you're looking at these areas that consistently fail in your in your home. Let's just look at how can we reduce the inventory in those areas. That is so smart. Oh, because it just makes it easier then just to handle it and to give you that peace of mind and seeing space and everything is just, yeah, because too much stuff, it does. I know you talk about this all the time, but I'm like, I feel it. I feel the stress come up when I'm like, I open something. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is all this? So Mm -hmm. I love it. It just gives a level of peace, control what you can control. And there's things that we can control our closet and what's in it, right? That's the the good news. That's awesome. All right, I have a question for you. Do you love online shopping? If the answer is yes, I get you. This is so me. I love it, but... If you love it as well, we have to be careful. It is so easy to get all comfy at home and scroll and swipe and spend. 
But if you've budgeted for your shopping, then just go for it. Just make sure that you're making your money go as far as possible. That is why I love shopping at Jane. They've got stylish clothes, accessories, home decor, and more for up to 65% off. Plus, Jane has new deals every day from thousands of small women-owned businesses and designer brands. So you've got to check it out, you guys. Go to jane.com slash Rachel and save up to 65% today. So when it comes to your money specifically, I know you guys have a money story. And when we talk about organizing your money, you know, I always think about the budget and I'm like, it's such a great way to get control of it, know what's going on. And for you, you've experienced this when it comes to controlling your money uh, and organizing it or just managing it really well. And the budget has helped you too, right? Absolutely. And so I would say this time of year, especially what I need to do to stay in budget and to stay on top of our money um, is I have to put the blinders on to all of the sales and the influencers. Um, just like the other day, I was on Instagram, right? And I love, there's this gal I follow because she does all these like DIY home projects and I love that. But she also sells a lot of stuff because that's how she makes money, yeah. right? And so she was holding up these like pillow slides, like those sandals, you know, that are supposed to be so comfortable. And she's like, oh my goodness, they're 50% off. They're the most comfortable thing ever. Everyone in my house has them. Like you have to have them. And I'm like clicking through to buy them. And I'm like, what are you doing, Don? We're in Minnesota. There is <laughs> snow on the ground for the next six months. Like, when are you going to wear these? And you actually have a very similar pair in the closet once it actually does get warm enough. But I couldn't believe how that sense of urgency, and it's my favorite, and you have, you'll never possibly get this good of a deal like ever again, how I bought into that. And I should know better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Oh, it's and amazing. And so I... You have to you have to recognize where your weak spots are. And so I have had to unfollow people on Instagram who I loved dearly, even though I don't know them, right? Um, I do uh, pickup orders. Like I rarely go into a store anymore um, because you just always have to have your guard up. Like if you're going to go into Target right now and you're going to walk by the dollar spot, like you better have good muscles right now to not impulse buy, right? Or to really have a good grip on what your budget is. Otherwise, if you're like me, it's like, I just have to stay away because do you know what? If I didn't see her story on Instagram that day, I would have never known that I could have got pillow slides for 50% off and that I was missing out if I didn't get them, right? I wouldn't have even had that temptation if I would have just read a book. Um, <laughs> and I love, Rachel, your book recommendations. I've read so many of them now. Oh, I'm so glad. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I found. I'm like, I am weak. If I go on Instagram at 930 at night, I am going to make a poor buying decision. Like it's just almost guaranteed. And so I'm like, Dawn, read a fiction book. You're going to be better off. You're going to feel more relaxed afterwards. Yes, and yes. like put the blinders on right now. But mostly if you are just feeling tired and just a little overwhelmed from everything we've just gone through, and maybe even just setting a budget right now feels daunting. Maybe you made some decisions over Christmas that you're not proud of. I do think that if you will continue to work on decluttering your home and simplifying your space around you so that we have a peaceful place to be, right? So where we can come home and we can let our guard down and we can make level decisions. So many have said that that process of decluttering also helps us to detach from the consumerism and that need to buy because we realize that all these things we've bought in the past, they didn't really live up to what we thought they were going to. And that also helps us to make better buying decisions or not fall victim mm, <laughs> to these yes. marketing campaigns anymore. So again, control what you can control right now. And so decluttering is it just goes hand in hand with getting your budget on track and getting out of debt as well. So if that's where you need to start right now and you're like, I can do that, do that. And then I trust that in a few weeks, then you're going to feel really capable of getting your budget under control too. Yes, that's such a good point though. Because when you're decluttering, you're like, oh, well, this and 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 that I bought. You're like, but yeah. we all fall for it, right? I mean, I do it oh, too. Yeah. So so it is, mm -hmm. it's so common, but I think going back to that truth and what I do think is so great about your message and what's so encouraging is when you do have a place like your home or your apartment, your condo, wherever you are, that feels peaceful, it, it has to give you more margin mentally 
to be like, all right, let me like actually dive in and think through topics like my money or my marriage or what, you know, my friendship, whatever it is. Like it gives you the capacity, even the emotional capacity to tackle these subjects that may be really tough just like mm-hmm. money. So almost, yeah, declutter, guys, and then you'll be a great budgeter. That's what Don and I are saying. Yeah. They go hand in totally. hand. <laughs> but, and, it, but it is. It's, it's, it's a huge process, and I think that decluttering, it will. It does kind of help whew, give a little bit of that margin yes. in the mental space. And follow anyone you can in the debt-free community. I love that hashtag. There's so many gals that I follow on Instagram, and they're posting their numbers and what they're doing to get out of debt. So I unfollow the people that are selling me pillow slides and other things, right? And I follow these women that are on this same journey, and it is so inspiring. Like the community around this is incredible, and it's so encouraging. And so we need that, right? It's really hard to feel like you're doing something alone, but follow, check out the hashtags and like follow follow other people on the same journey. And I, what I love to think about, Rachel, is that by this time next year, your life could be completely different with your house and with your money. And there is so much peace and freedom that comes from both. And so do whatever it takes because it is the most worthwhile things that you will ever do. Yes, 100%. Oh, I totally agree. And that's the encouraging thing is I'm like, you have the ability to do this. You know, if you're watching or listening, you know, that's what Dawn's saying. And that's what I believe about you is that you have the ability. You get to choose it. And so, yeah, you're, you're not going to be perfect at it. We're still not perfect at our lanes of life, you know, whether it's money, you know, or decluttering or buying stuff that you may not need. Like, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but man, you still have that option to do something about it. And that's so empowering to me. And, and I know you've seen people's stories just like me on the money side is, you know, people that go from a crazy cluttered house to actually making small steps a little bit at a time. And you look up and it's been two months and you think, oh, wow, I really did that. I really did get rid of all that stuff. Or I really am budgeting for the second month in a row. I can't believe it. So it's just a day at a time. But you guys, you you can do it. So Dawn, thank you so much for the encouragement and the tips. Where can everyone check out all your stuff? We spend most of our time on YouTube. So if you search The Minimal Mom, we have over 600 videos <laughs> to help you declutter. No matter what area of your house you need to declutter. So you can find us there or theminimalmom.com. I love it so much. Dawn, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you guys. Make sure to check out everything Dawn's doing to get that extra encouragement and inspiration because she is so fabulous at it. So, uh, all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love. 